everyone and you're welcome to the Irish Mammy channel. Today I'm bringing you to the polytunnel. Finally um, uh, recording a video in the polytunnel after talking about it for about two or three months at this stage. So um, I finally got time to get to the polytunnel today. Um, it's been about, I'm ashamed to say it's over two months from I've been here now. Um, I'd say August was definitely the last time I was here. Uh, harvesting tomatoes no doubt. But um, my tomatoes have been um, taken out, cleared out. My good friend cleared them out for me. Um, so I'm here today to uh, do another little bit of clear out, harvest whatever's left in it. Um, and a little bit of planting if I get time. I'm not sure if I'll just get time to do it today, but I do have the um, plants with me for um, putting in. Um, if I have to come back tomorrow, so be it. So I have five of these beds rented. Um, I share with two other GIY enthusiasts, member of our, members of our local GIY group. Um, so I'm just going to show you what's in my five beds today. Um, so this is the remainder of my peppers from the summer. Um, a lot of them have started to go off on me, unfortunately. Um, mostly green peppers in there. There is a few red ones though. Um, I planted both... Um, bell peppers and uh, Marconi red peppers. Uh, I also have some banana peppers and uh, chilies, I think here along the front, just maybe three plants at the front there are both the bell, or the, um, both the banana peppers and chilies at the very front. The rest are bells and Marconi. Um, the next bed I had melons planted. I have some of these harvested before uh, and I gave some away and this is what's left. So the vines obviously well rotted at this stage um, but the melons I'd say are probably still good to eat. Now this bed had been emptied out. This was tomatoes. I'm growing a lovely crop of chickweed at the minute. <laughs> I'm laughing. Um, one of the lads that uh, rents with me here had told me about this growing. He thought I had lettuce growing in the bed. But um, obviously it's a crop of chickweed. And I'm noticing the way it's growing um, along the drip line, which just amuses me. And I see a stray melon that didn't belong to me. I'm not sure where that came from. Uh, this is, well, this bed had chilies and sweet potatoes were what I actually planted in it but you can see these at the back here are Fisalis they're called or Cape Gooseberries um, they've numerous names these little fruit um, you can see they're growing red or growing brown there I'll actually open that up and show you what it looks like if I can do it one handed hold on let's see if I can balance this Oh, so this berry is busted, but they have a lovely orange berry and it's a lovely citrus flavored berry. Um, and you see them used as decoration a lot in fancy restaurants, but they do have a lovely flavor. Uh, so this are, these are the chilies. I was growing um, cayennes and jalapenos here. Uh, and I was mad to get these ha uh, cayennes to ripen to red. Um, because my aim is to get these dried and I have some done already. I did pick some earlier on. Uh, I dehydrated them and uh, when I have them all dehydrated I'm going to turn them into cayenne powder. And you can see the leaves here of the sweet potato. So I'm hoping to get a peek under the soil to see if I have any sweet potatoes today. Um, but that's really all. There's still jalapenos growing here at the front. I made lots of cowboy candy and dehydrated lots of um, dehydrated lots of jalapenos as well. Um, I love chilies. Now I'm not a chili freak that I'd be going for mad hot chilies, but I do like a little bit of chili. Um, and then this in here. Well, there's one long bed central to the whole polytunnel just spam that there so my friend has that one and I just have the middle one in here so you can see I have my trays uh, of plants on sitting on that ready for planting out 
so that had been tomatoes and you can see all these strings hanging down we use these strings for crop supports and um, mostly tomatoes and cucumbers but they're installed over all the beds obviously because we rotate every year um, to different beds with our tomatoes and it has worked out as a good system so far um, but I will say to be sure to use um, a coated rope uh, or string because um, any of the jute twine or anything like that it just rots um, unfortunately and gives way when you have a heavy crop of tomatoes on your plant uh, so that's the tour, the grand tour <laughs> um, of the five beds. Not a whole pile to show at the minute. And really, I suppose with five beds, there's never going to be a huge pile to show. There, so you can see now more Fazalis growing in there at the back. These, and these are just self-seeded, these Fazalis. I think I grew them one year and they've kept coming back. But you can see why. I mean, they dropped their fruit. You just see in there. Like there's tons of their fruit dropped in there. Um, and that's the idea they drop their fruit and then you can eat them um, they're not nice until they have gone that brown colour the, the wee papery uh, outside has gone that colour they're related to tomatoes and tomatillos um, but a nice sweet version um, and very tasty uh, and make a lovely jam as well uh, right, so the first job I think I'm going to do is harvest these melons or at least get them all off the bed and uh, clear the vines because I suppose that is probably the handiest bed to clear, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, if I get it and the chickweed clear, I have two more beds to plant in uh, along with that one down there in the middle where I have all my um, seedlings. So I'll set you up in a time lapse and get the harvesting and clearing started. Well, I don't believe it. I have one giant sweet potato anyway. Oh, wait. Add another one. I actually can't believe that. Um, I, I kind of didn't expect to get um, sweet potatoes at all. It was more of an experiment. Uh, so it's going to push me now to really get this bed cleared out. Uh, get all the stuff off it and just dig through the whole thing. So, so far this is all I've found. Um, I couldn't say really that they're terribly successful. They're, um, now I, I want to just say that I only planted four slips of sweet potatoes. So it was totally an experiment from the very beginning. Um, four slips in half of this bed which I think is like eight by five or eight by five and a half feet um, but so far I've noticed that really they've only grown and swelled right beside where I put the potato slip into the ground um, so you can see there I have four quite big tubers which were the four closest to each of the slips and um, now I may get an awful surprise if I dig down deep into this but I really don't expect it to uh, fruit, be very fruitful uh, and I certainly don't expect where the vines took off um, I don't think they rooted into the ground quick enough I mean they really didn't start to vine off properly until the middle of August so I don't think they had time to um, produce the tubers underneath uh, under the soil um, but before I do any more digging around and rooting I want to get these chilies harvested and then pl pull out the plants um, so I'll get on with that now next.
so that's the beds all cleared for now um just the two beds cleared out and uh, it's starting to get dark so i'm going to get one bed planted really quickly actually one that we share between us um, and i'm just going to put onions in it we'll hopefully have them harvested out then by um the middle of june and then we'll be ready to put something like basil or something in it so we use this bed just to plant crops that we share out among us all um, so I'm going to get those onions in really quickly now before it gets dark and I'll be back tomorrow then to plant the rest of my seedlings in the in the beds for over winter. Uh, so you might remember I got um, onions in a, an order from Fruit Hill Farm so this is them here. I haven't planted them yet at home and I am trying to get the bed prepared at home for planting them out and you'll see that uh, soon enough in a video but for now I'm just sticking a couple of them in here into this bed um, to keep my options open for harvesting for next year. Okay we're back for day two, round two. Um, the worst of the long evenings, long dark evenings, is there doesn't be as much time to work, but it's no harm, forces the gardener to rest. So we're going to get back at it, finish clearing this bed, and hopefully get more stuff planted uh, this, today. Uh, I finished off planting onions yesterday evening. I'm not sure how much of that you could actually see. Um, it did start to get quite dark um, towards the end of it. So uh, I'll go over everything when I have um, all planted at the end of the video. Okay, so I finally got that bed cleared. I just hadn't the energy to finish it off yesterday evening. Uh, it can be quite physical work, of course, when you start into these jobs, especially if you have a bad back like I do. Uh, so I have that bed finished off. I just had to put the drip back down it, actually. And uh, then I'm going to run through the plants I have to put in the ground. Uh, some of them are more mature than others. Um, in fact, they're nearly uh, both ends of the scale. One uh, tray or two long in the trays and probably a bit uh, root bound and the other ones are probably too young but it's a case of now or never if i don't get them in now into the ground they'll likely just sit in the trays till they rot so um i'm going to get them in now and uh, it's going to take a little bit of planning because of course i want to keep room for putting more plants in in the early spring um so i'm just going to take a few minutes to try and sort out uh what i'm going to put where um and uh, then I'll come back to you. So I have a good variety of uh, brassicas. They're all brassicas, but a good variety of them here. And the trick is to try and arrange them in, in the different beds uh, according to how long they're going to be growing. So I have sprout and broccoli there, which will not be um, harvested really until I'd say March, maybe April. Um, so I'm looking at putting that in a bed on its own with possibly kale because as well it also grows quite tall uh, so that's another thing to take into consideration is the height of each of the plants um, so I will probably try and put kale and sprout and broccoli all in together um, now I don't have a huge pile of kale but there's some down there at the end uh, a Siberian variety um siberian kale which is one i quite like um it's quite tender um i thought i did have another one as well but maybe not um again it's one quite tender it can um, be added in along with cabbage because um the children of course don't really like kale i think the thoughts of it is worse than the actual eating of it but um i do hide it in uh, in stews and add it into cabbage so it's a good way and even blend some of it into soups uh, chopped up into soups so uh, not a whole pile of kale but again uh, it grows quite tall so I'll add it in along with the sprout and broccoli 
Uh, I also have Brussels sprouts there and I'm certainly not going to get Brussels sprouts for Christmas. I wouldn't expect them. I'd be lucky, honestly, I'd be lucky to get them to grow at all. But if they do grow, it'll be um, probably February or March before I get them anyway. Uh, depending on how cold of uh, weather we get. I have loads of cabbage in. Uh, Savoy cabbage, which will be one of the later cabbages. Um, I have Copenhagen market there, which I don't think I've actually grown that variety before, but um, it's quite a dense headed cabbage. Uh, so probably uh, January, February before that's ready. Um, and another cabbage earliest of all, which like the name suggests, um, has quite a short growing period. So I hope to have that uh, first. Then I have two different varieties of red cabbage. Um, I love red cabbage, particularly braised red cabbage. Um, I also love it to make coleslaw. Uh, so I'm trying out two different varieties. I have grown the red drumhead many times before. The Ruby Perfection is a different one. I haven't grown it before. So I'm trying that one out new. Um, and again, they're all quite low growing. So most of the cabbages will go into a bed by themselves. Uh, I then I have cauliflower which grows quite big and um, maybe not super tall but it needs a good bit of space to spread out its leaves uh, and I also have marathon broccoli now I think that's um, the tray that was sown first I do have another tray with plenty more broccoli and I'm debating whether I'll put all the broccoli in and put the older seedlings in the middle because they'll be the taller ones um, so that tray was sown quite early. I think that was sown maybe at the beginning of September. I wonder have I the date? No, I don't have the date. And there's just, I've taken that one out. That's the Copenhagen market cabbage. Um, not too badly root bound. So there's a good chance that that will uh, do well when it gets into the ground. I have seen them worse. Um, now you can see that is quite dry though, but we'll get them well watered when we get them into the ground. Um, I mustn't have put the dates in the back of them and that's normal because I like to reuse the labels so I often don't put the dates uh, on them at all because um, well I usually keep it in my head or at least think I'm going to keep it in my head of good intentions uh, these ones were sown later I sold these trays the rest of these trays on a video I uh, can't quite remember when it was but it was probably the end of September or early October um, so in here I have more cauliflower uh, more broccoli and then swedes and turnips now they're quite leggy and that's all to do with the uh, poorer lighting of course this time of the year uh, these were in the greenhouse at home it's not that they weren't getting a lot of light but it's just the fact that the sun is lower in the sky so they're not getting that direct sunlight anymore um, but they will grow on good and um, you've probably seen I have the slug pellets with me these are quite young seedlings to be putting in the ground. So I've brought the slug pellets because if there's anything a slug loves, it's a young seedling in the ground. So we put plenty of slug pellets down and they are of course the organic variety. So we'll put the slug pellets down to try and deter them so that these um, young seedlings can get a good uh, head start. And of course, when they do grow on bigger, the slugs tend to leave them alone. Um, although in the winter time, it's just hard to tell. Uh, I have a tray of peas there, probably not going to get them sown or planted today because I do need to set up a netting system for them. Um, and these are leeks and celery that I'm really just chancing my arm with. Um, they were sown early last, early in the summer. Um, and so these were the little tiny ones that weren't worth planting out at the time in the summer. Um, I potted them on and uh, stuck them into these uh, larger cells than they were originally in um, when I, I pricked them out. Uh, so I'm sick of them in and hoping for the best. Um, I do think the leeks should be hardy enough, but they may bolt rather quickly since they've been lying around so long, but we'll see how we go. Um, and I'll just tuck them in along the edges of um, the other plants. And this other tray, again, is another one that was sewn on a video. Um, and there's more Brussels sprouts kohlrabi, another round of Copenhagen market cabbage, another round of the earliest of all cabbage, and another uh, round of ruby perfection cabbage. So, um, like I said, all brassicas, brassicas grow quite well in the winter time here, and well, they're really nearly the only one, apart from the onions and garlic, they're the only vegetables that can grow 
um, through our cooler season. Um, and like I said, of course, I have the polytunnel, which really helps them, uh, helps give them a good boost. As always though, I have said before, it is a risk. Uh, there's always a chance of things bolting. Uh, most people are familiar with plants bolting in the summer due to the high heat, but it took me a while to get used to the fact that things will bolt from a uh, cold uh, cold temperatures as well uh, through the winter. So some of them will grow on good, some of them won't. I have more than enough to feed the family, uh, so it can't be, but um, I will get enough. Um, and then if there's any extras, it's a bonus um, to be given away to other people. So I'm going to start taking out the plugs here um, placing them on the ground and seeing where um, where I'm going to put them in and I'll probably move them around a hundred times trying to organize it and finally I will get them into the ground. Okay, so as usual, I'm starting to run out of light again. Um, I'm going to run around very quickly. I, you see me planting all the plugs into the ground. Um, some of them I buried quite deep. If they've got leggy or anything, I buried them right up to where their first leaves were. Um, I've orientated them so that the bigger ones are what the sun hits first. So that as the sun comes round, uh, during the day and in the evening, that it hits the smaller ones. That's just to not have the taller items shading uh, the smaller items because um, I mean the light is going to be so little and really there'll be very little sun shine anyway but whatever bit we do get we want to make sure that it's hitting everything right and that everything's getting the optimum amount of daylight that it can and sunlight. Um, I'll do a quick run around just to show you so I've everything planted I put slug pellets down on everything the beauty of this polytunnel in here is that um, I pretty much neglect it until stuff's ready to harvest so uh, hence why I've put the slug pellets down. Now we'll be here for um, a few days just water and everything um, to make sure everything gets rooted in well and settled in well. Um, we do have the drip system and it runs automatically uh, but just for the first few days I keep the seedlings watered just to make sure that they get settled in and, and rooted in well. After that it's left to its own devices and the slug pellets will hopefully keep the slugs away till everything gets established as well. Um, so I've everything watered in, I have everything planted, I have slug pellets put down uh, and I will go and feed, um, I'll give it a top dressing of um, chicken manure pellets. I buy chicken manure seaweed pellets from Quick Crop and um, I probably should have put them in but I can't remember which beds I have actually fed already. I don't want to overfeed them because I don't want everything growing far too fast. So. Um, in a couple of days time I will top dress the beds when I figure out which ones I haven't fed already. Um, so I have still one bed left to do, the bed with the peppers because I have to harvest the peppers first uh, before I pull them out. I've left them, might get them done over the weekend if I'm coming up here watering I might get a few minutes to harvest the peppers and get those plants pulled out. But really the energy's drained out of me now, like I said we're losing light as well. So for all those reasons, the last bit and because I'm just 
wrecked <laughs> um, and I have a lot more to do at home as well so um, the last bed will be left um, and hopefully do hopefully done in the next few days um, right so just give you a quick uh, a quick view of the um, beds now here when they're finished so this is the central bed here um, I planted all cabbages in that one and um, so let me see this row here is all savoy cabbages so the older ones you know i had two different trays of seedlings so the ones up there where am i the ones up at the top there are the older ones are the ones that were sown first and as they come down they're the smaller younger seedlings and um, because of the way the light hits so that the smaller seedlings get as much light as possible uh, the cabbage on the outside here is copenhagen market cabbage and the same thing the older ones are on that are up there on that side and the younger ones come on down here um, and uh, the next row the third row over is um red drum head cabbage um not all of them germinated or they may have but they were probably eaten by slugs or died off after whatever so i have only a few seedlings of that and actually them the other ruby perfection i actually only ended up with two of those and um, but look it's probably plenty anyway so what i done was i filled in with the earliest of all cabbage then down from uh from there on down as earliest of all and from oh where am i from there on down as well and that row is earliest of all as well and um, it was either that or take up another bed with completely completely with cabbage and um I think it's better I've done it this way. And I have still lots of cabbage plants left, cabbage seedlings. Um, I'm gonna leave my seedlings here again for a few days just to make sure everything takes off well. If anything dies off or you know doesn't thrive, I still have replacements for it. Um, and then I'll be bringing them home and planting some in the greenhouse as well at home. But of course I still have to um, clear out the tomatoes out a bit. So I'm not in any panic. So I'm leaving the seedlings here for handiness as well. I'll have to lug them out now as well. Uh, this bed here is all, wait, let's see, it's all the taller things. So these two middle rows are sprouting broccoli, two different varieties. One is Cardinal and the other is Rudolph. They're both purple sprouting broccoli. And again, I won't have them till mid to late spring, maybe even early summer. Um, then I have Brussels sprouts on the end here. And I only had a few plants of Brussels sprouts. Uh, and that's the older tray. When I went to the newer tray, um, actually there were only tiny, tiny little tots of things. So I'm hoping they'll grow on another wee bit in the um, in the trays. They were too just far too small to be uh, planted in here. So I've only three Brussels sprouts plants. I'm not really that worried. Um, I find Brussels sprouts are a hard thing to get right because um, they're either too loose or um, too small uh, it's it's very hard to harvest them right and i would love to know how the the professional growers do it um i'd like to get a few tips on growing brussels sprouts better uh, also i find you know if you're trying to grow them through the summer um they're attacked well like all the brassicas attacked from slugs from the ground attacked by caterpillars from from the butterflies from the air and even if you have your slug pellets down and you have them netted against the butterflies, you can still end up with um, the, oh gosh, aphids. Or, um, oh, there's a different name on them now, I can't remember, but they're like a gray type of aphid that um, grow on brassicas. So you really, sometimes you can't win. I mean, th obviously this has happened to me before. I've had experience of this, so. Um, hence why I'm not uh, very fond of growing Brussels sprouts because there's just too many uh, fronts for attack. Um, so there's the seedlings that I have left there. The peas are in at the back there and I've I put slug pellets in all of them as well just in case because um, they had been on the table in the greenhouse which I thought they were safe enough from the slugs although there was a few uh, had been munched but on the ground here they're definitely um, easy prey for the slugs so I put the slug pellets on the trays as well of seedlings uh, in here is all my broccoli um so I have six six deep by three across so 18 plants in uh, this bed of marathon broccoli still have plenty of plants left over as well I'll be putting another good few of them in in the greenhouse at home 
um, and some of the smaller ones can probably grow on and honestly I could probably if it's not terribly cold I could probably plant them out in early spring as well well we'll see how that goes um, and of course I can give some away like you know the other guys that I share the polytunnel here with um, could probably take some of the seedlings off me as well um, the next one then is cauliflower um, so you can hardly see the ones that I've planted along here because they're the tiny um, newer seedlings and then you can see the bigger ones along here all um, igloo variety I do have another variety candid charm sown but I'll have to put them in in the greenhouse at home uh, and then I still have my celery and leeks to plant um, and swedes to tuck in somewhere maybe when I get this bed clear I probably put the swedes and turnips in there I also have kohlrabi as well growing uh, tuck some of them in there too um, but I can still plant around the very edges of these um, I probably stick the leeks in around the edges of these um, cauliflower and broccolis um, and well because I have four rows in that central bed I'll probably not tuck anything in along with them they're quite close as it is um, but that's the thing uh, with intensive garden like this you can put things closer together than you would normally um, if you were we say growing you know in rows in a field or in ridges in a field um, and you can push um, for the best the, for the highest production possible so that's all for today and all for this video as well um, I hope you've enjoyed coming along with me and seeing the polytunnel for the first time I think um, I did do a tour uh, in the summertime of the polytunnel, which I believe I have on my Instagram highlights. Um, I'll try and put a link to that down below. Um, so I would really appreciate if you liked the video um, to press the wee thumbs up button underneath. Um, and again, subscribe as well. Um, the subscriber numbers are uh, climbing slowly but surely. And uh, it's good to see the numbers going up and you know getting the support. Um, so like I said I'll put the link for the Instagram down below and until next week thanks for watching goodbye